Hey folks, um, I'm amazed, you know, it's kind of your patience, um, you know, second day, it's afternoon, um, I'm excited to be here, um, I'm uh, running a consulting business, you would explain it, but the way I explain it is, I'm running an enablement business, I'm enabling you, I'm enab enabling other companies to become successful in establishing a customer success practice. I'm excited because you will actually be part of a world premiere today. Um, something that I want to share with you will be so dead simple uh, that I hope, and I'm sure, you will be able to take back home. Uh, and actually, tomorrow, you will apply it to your own business. Uh, and I say it is plain simple because it comes out of an experience that we've built up in customer success enablement, uh, dealing with clients. Because the complicated schemes will take too long, right? I, I've been in large companies, I've been in small companies, and, uh, and that is something I want to give you as a gift to take home with you. Apply it to your own business, it's called a framework. It sounds really, really big, right? But it's actually only three things, and this is as much as I can remember personally, right? It's three things, especially on the second day in a conference in an afternoon. Um, and uh, before I go into this one, I uh, just want to say a few things. First of all, there's Slido. Just a quick reminder, go on your mobile device and check out Slido and think about the questions that will come up throughout the session. Uh, that is the first thing I want to share with you. Second, uh, I want to invite you to become part of my human network. What do I mean? I mean, most of you are connected with me already on LinkedIn. I noticed after I've seen uh, the feedback on that session today uh, that I'm sharing some interesting uh, content with you. So I made a promise, and I'll hope to, to keep the promise with you this afternoon. And uh, feel free to send me an invitation and stay in touch with us um, and uh, with me personally, because that is what I believe is the future of the success of all of us individually to maintain your Newman network, right? Find the right people in the right place. And these right people in the right place are not necessarily always in your own company. Um, and um, that's also a reason why I want to thank um, all my peer consultants that have been on the stage yesterday and are, are on the stage still today, uh, because we are building one of, or we are creating one of these human networks where we are helping each other. It's kind of a new model. Um, where we think we can help you and your companies with giving you advice from different perspectives. I mean, the world is a rainbow. It has so many different colors. I can only see one color. I need all of you to basically see the rest of the beauty of this world. Uh, and, that's, and that's what we, what we drive uh, in, in this business. So a little bit uh, more about me. As, as I've said, I've, I've been, I mean, this is, this is not about me. This session is about you, right? I'll just come back to you in a second. Uh, but so that you'll get a feeling with, um, you know, what you can get from the session today and maybe from the interaction in the future as part of my human network in the future. Um, I've been in big companies, built customer success up there. Uh, and by the way, it's not me, it was the team. By the way, some of the team members are here uh, and they have done a great job in doing that. I have been in the consulting business, that, that people call it that way, in that enablement business I think I'm in, for about a year. I've worked with very small companies now. I've worked with large companies. I've worked with medium-sized companies. I've worked with software companies. And i worked with companies that are potentially users of software but are struggling to make it beneficial to their business users to use that software instead of something else that they used as a business habit in doing their job before, okay? So what I help these companies to do is to find a way, well, how can they eventually change the behavior of some people, and this is psychology almost, right? How to gain the benefits that they want to achieve from using something new, be it a software, be it a product, be it another subscription, you name it. Why? Because all of us, all of them are under pressure to do more with less in less time, with lower risk, with more output, uh, and, and that pressure on the people is basically driving companies to look at, um, look at new ways. So 
Uh, you also, uh, and by the way, that's why uh, I'll keep you a little bit engaged. You'll have a couple of sheets on your table. And by the way, while I'm speaking, I'm inviting everybody from the back rows. Maybe join us here in the front line because you will have the benefit of having the worksheets on the table that you not only can fill out for me, right, but it's for you to take back home uh, and actually take actions from that one. So that is what I'm suggesting. What I'm also promising you is I'll, I'll take as much input from what you're creating here as that shared intelligence in this room. I mean, it's massive. Um, bring it together in one material, and I will share it with all of you um, on LinkedIn, right? I mean, it's simple. Um, so, and, and you will get it before end of the week. Um, so let me, let me get to my promise. Uh, before I get there, a little bit of motivation. A few things only, only four points I want to share with you. Uh, and that is, first, firstly, a number, because yes, I'm a number guy. Right? Because why are we doing that here? It's not just an exercise on an afternoon to do something better on things, but it's driving numbers. The 125% is a number that best companies that are driving adoption successfully, achieving 120% of the revenue of their existing customers this year, next year. Let me repeat that in other words. These companies don't need to do any sales job, right? to grow 25% in the following year, right? Isn't that a nice thing? I mean, there are first companies that are publicly listed. Um, I don't want to mention names necessarily, right? But they are in the software business that are, re that are reporting on each conference call each quarter when they're talking about their numbers, that particular metric. So some call it net negative churn, some other call it existing growth of existing, or growth of existing customers, and the third call it expansion, right? And we heard about that before. Now, the second thing I want to uh, call out today, and, and I'm, you know, you will, you will notice that one. I'm a, I'm a positive thinker because I believe in everything that happens in life, whether you would classify it as negative or positive, right? There is something that you can get from it to, to actually take a learning from it or take a conclusion from it because that is something that you can act on, right? And instead of having negative things dragging you down. So now you've noticed the session is called reducing the risk of churn. I mean, so many negative words in that title, right? Risk and churn. Um, you know, I would encourage you to think differently. Think about the opportunity of expanding, right? Because it says exactly the same thing. Um, and, uh, and that is what I would encourage you, not only for adoption or customer success to think about, it's, it was a personal experience for myself, right? That, that, that way of seeing things in life is always, always good. The third thing is, I believe you've been bombarded in the past with frameworks. You have created your own frameworks, you've seen frameworks, you uh, probably are thinking about that you know, we need a framework and something that needs to work for us. The same happened to me. So I was kind of for a while, I was sitting back and when I became you know, an, an, an enabler for others, um, I was thinking, well, let me take somehow working with my clients and build something that is really stupid simple for customer success management, for organizations that are building up something uh, that we can remember. And, and I told you the secret already, it's, it's three things only, right? So uh, nothing, nothing highly complex, maybe even too simple, but that flexible, as you will see it in a second, that you can take it away and apply it to your own business. Uh, so that is what you will take away from here. Um, I'll let you work a little bit on your, on your paper, but, but before you do it, I want you to understand what that framework is. That's something that I promised you to take away. And by the way, this is a world premiere. There's a trademark on that framework that, that, we, that, that I have filed, uh, but I've decided today to open it up to all of you. So you're absolutely free to take it away, whatever it says, trademark on it. Maybe, you know, kind of refer that, you know, where, what the, what the origin, what the source was. Uh, but feel free to use it, modify it, give it different letters. You know, my only ask from experience is keep it simple for you. Keep it simple for your, for, for, for your environment because you will be the experts who understand how to use it. The rest of the organization needs to see the benefit of it. Now, what is it? It is the BIM framework and it's actually these three stages. So I probably don't need to explain all of that to you because it is as simple as it is self-explaining, right? So first of all, you have that, that's how you enter into 
any engagement with a customer driving successful adoption and subsequently everything that customer success management is. It's the validation phase. So what do you validate with a customer? Let me ask you a question. How many customers you've seen in your, in your customer engagements that had a very clear three topic or two elements of KPIs defined of what they want to achieve qualitatively and quantitatively by using your product? 1%, 2%? I know it's afternoon, I don't see anything with the light here, but, but it's, I, yeah, actually I don't see any arms up. Uh, and by the way, that is congruent with my own experience. So, and that has to do a little bit with the fact that, well, we are dealing with not only you know, anonymous customers, we are dealing with people in the customer. And the people in the customer, they're responsible for making something uh, implemented or rolling something out, are the ones, or not necessarily the ones who own the budget. Okay, because these are the ones that have delegated the task to somebody who gets that stuff done, right? But they may not know why that is important now for the company. So what do you need to do? And I'm, I'm coming back to that one because this is important. Um, and by the way, I'm, I'm consulting, I'll give you a story. I'm consulting um, startup companies and, and um, we, we want to deal with, with that startup company recently just because we have a customer success methodology in there and others don't have that. Um, and, and, and the question of the customer initially was, I mean, what the hell? I mean, you won the deal. Why on earth do we need to sit down and do all this kind of business KPI thing, right? Because, I mean, you get the money. Uh, so, so, so why do we need to waste time on that? And, and the answer is very simple, because we want to give you the arguments to your financial decision makers to make sure if it was useful for you to show them how useful it was, how measurable you've achieved something, how well it was aligned to your company strategy or that fiscal year's business initiative that you've launched here. Um, and, uh, and that's why it is important. So this is the starting point of how we call it to get the meat on the bones for these people that are benefit from that one. So that validation phase is important. And you see the bold blue arrows that, that show you know, the normal and the ideal path, but the light blue arrows that will actually show, well, if you don't get that validation of what the KPIs are and the recommendation is no more than three, right? Measurable, I mean, smart metrics, specific, measurable, and, 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 um, and everything that you know what is behind the smart. That is what you need to build there. As long as you don't have that, try to stay as long as possible in that phase and do that kind of work with the customer, convince them um, why, that is, uh, why that is important to, to, to do that. In parallel, you may go to what we call the Ignite phase. So this is the I in the BIM model. Um, now, all of your businesses are different. Um, Ignite for me, and I called it Ignite and not only install or onboarding, right, but, or, or learning. Everything that, is, that, that I've just mentioned is in that Ignite phase. The Ignite phase describes the phase where you basically get the momentum within your customer to get them excited about the new thing they have, the users I mean, uh, to basically get that used. And that means igniting the start of some identified use cases. So some very specific use cases you may have identified for your solution in the client company uh, to basically get started. It includes the implementation, maybe not the global implementation yet, right? It includes a pilot implementation potentially for, for a group where you can see very quickly an impact. So the low hanging fruits are people calling it, right? You install it and you integrate that, and that is important, into the customer's business. You may need some help from some change management people within the customer or somewhere else to do that. Why? Because it has to do, uh, and this is where you start, it has to do with changing human behavior. And that is hard. You know, people that I know, I know what the story is that I'm telling now, right? Uh, that is, uh, when, when I was 20 years ago starting to, starting to run a marathon, right? I had to get in shape, so I had to start. It took me 30 painful days to get out of bed every morning because I'm a human like everybody of us. Um, and only after 30 days of painful, um, you know, experience, I started to feel a little bit better. It's good. I mean, I, you know, it's kind of, I feel better when I'm running, so, so I love it. And, and I started to get more in shape, so I've seen progress, but it was painful. And the same happens when you change habits of people that, are, that have done their job the way they've done it in the past, now with your tools. 
Um, so this is the ignite phase. You will stay there until you basically have a thing up and running. Almost the first use case is ready to be used and rolled out to be measured because then you come to the most important phase uh, and that's what I, I indicated in green here is the manage. But it's not only manage, it's, it's measure, it's moving, it's multiplying the effect that you've seen with the initial in the initial ignite phase. And that is where you are creating the meat on the bone, right? Because here you measure the progress that the customer is making related to the KPIs that you've identified in the in the V phase. The KPIs are one thing to define. Maybe you figure in the managed phase, well, actually, it's really hard to measure. I don't have data. I mean, how do I measure these, these you know, um, KPIs that I've defined there? That's why it's very important to look at the validate phase to have something that is really, really measurable. And it's, it'll, it'll not be perfect, and it's probably the most painful thing in that entire VIM process. Uh, and you will face questions from the customer, say, well, why do we need to waste time there, right? It is because they will see and, 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 and have it documented what the benefit of that one is after the M phase. So don't overplay that, right? But I'm giving you that, uh, that one and maybe a last word to it as well. It is kind of, for the technicians in the room, it's kind of a finite state machine, right? So you have states where the customer is in potentially, and you have transitions from one state to another. I'll illustrate that a little bit. The, when you're in the managed phase and you have a relationship to the business owner where the initiative has been defined for your fiscal year and how it aligns with you, the use of your solution, right? When that, when, that, uh, when that business user, and which happens reality, moves to another company or moves to another job, right? Then, then you're losing your business sponsor. I mean, how do you detect that? How important is that? It is very important because now suddenly, if that happens, you will be, by definition, not aligned anymore with the usage of your solution within your customer contributing to the success of their business initiatives. So therefore, it is very important to, to actually, well, do two things as an example, right? First of all, the guy that leaves there, or the lady, uh, will have a very positive experience from working with you in the past in that company. So they go somewhere else, it's a reference, it's a multiplier, so you expand your business potentially. A great expand lead, right, to your sales organization uh, or yourself to basically build that, that business. The second thing is, as you've built the meat on the bone there, and, and I'm coming back to that, to that statement, you will tell, you can, you can show the new business owner that takes it over, say, well, this is what we've done before, right? This is how we helped your business, and here are the graphs, and this is the benefit that we've achieved on your KPIs. Now, my question to them would be, well, is that the same direction you want us to continue to help you, or is there some slight change? So you would actually validate the KPIs, and you may change the KPIs for the next fiscal year with the customer. Nothing is stable in that, in that environment. So, so this, this model accommodates for that reality thing, and it's still absolutely simple. Uh, and the rest is actually self-explaining. And, and I'll leave that here because now you will be able to take it and apply it to your own environment, and you're mentally probably starting to do that. And the way we start to do that is um, doing a little exercise here in probably the next 10 minutes uh, to start thinking about and applying that model as, um, as a model to manage the risk of churn. Um, you can apply it to anything else within customer success management, but applying that VIM model to the risk, to managing risk of churn would basically mean, well, what risk of churn will exist in each of these different phases? So the risk of churn uh, in the validate phase may be that there is a leaky sales to customer success transition. Um, no or weak KPI is defined, which in an ideal scenario should be defined in the very beginning, right? What can we do to mitigate that? And here is an example. Well, you'll have a good handover pro process. I don't want to talk about that because that was part of another session already. Um, or, um, you know, go in and try to agree with the customer on KPIs early. Um, a nice side effect of KPI agreement is that you, before you can do that with a customer, you need to understand what their business goals are, right? So you understand the business of the customer better. You get more intimate with the customer. So it has a lot of benefits of understanding the business of the customer. Uh, 
Now, once you're through this, let's assume for a second the best, right? Let's assume you have achieved something like two, three KPIs identified with the customer that makes sense, and they want to see that, yeah, this is something I want to work against. I want to show my boss that I've achieved that by making that rolled out and used by everybody in the, in the organization. Then we get to the Ignite phase. Um, and one thing could be in the Ignite phase that you realize, well, there have been wrong expectations being set by whoever, right? Wrong expectations in terms of what it can do. So you probably need to correct the expectations and in the Ignite phase already, you know, do that there and not later because that is something that could put your entire solution at risk uh, for renewal um, or diminish your opportunity of expansion, to say it in positive words. Um, so. Uh, and then there are elements in the managed phase. Once you are there and everybody is using it or increasingly is adopted in the business, you can then stand and have your monthly meeting with a customer or you play that in an electronic way back to the customer how you measure the KPI attainment by your users using your solution um, in, a, in, a, in a structured way. So once you're in this managed phase, um, you may see things that customers don't see the benefits, right? You've rolled that out, uh, but they don't see real benefits. So you'll, you'll have a collaboration solution rolled out, um, you know, supposed to be used by everybody, but it's just too complicated to switch it on in the meeting rooms and there is no support and things hang loose and it's just, you know, it's a mess. And uh, the customer doesn't see benefits. Actually, more the opposite. It becomes too, more complicated than doing the job with their old tools, right? So go back to use Skype or something. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> um, so um, customer priorities may change as well. You know, it's, as I've said, every company has a lifetime, and um, and in that in that in that company, priorities change over time. So when the customer priority has changed, your solution and your KPIs you've defined with the customer may not target the goal of the company anymore. They go a little bit off target. And that is an opportunity once you're close to the customer, once you know what their business initiatives are, to realign it, right? So what do you do? Plan regular idea feedback and visualize adoption process. Maybe a last word, what I have personally seen working extremely well in the years I've been in customer success management, and that is a recommendation to you. You will shine with customers, and I tell you why. Because if you are not only managing the customer in a way it shows uh, on, on that simple process, but you are becoming creative about, hey, what other features or functions or even other products of my company could you benefit from that could help you to achieve your business goals as well? Uh, then you bring ideas back to the customer uh, that they may not have had without you. So you are becoming an extension of their business team and you're starting to think in the business terms of the customer. Now, this may be normal to you, but I couldn't emphasize more that I have seen the most successful customer success managers out there that have actually been creative, positively minded, right? Yep, you know, we need to fix that solution, but here's another thing, right? You know, it's kind of, if we do this, this would really help you, right? Uh, or if you, if, if we enable that HR department in Asia uh, using that collaboration solution, they could do all their interviewing using that collaboration solution, right? Wouldn't that be nice? Because especially in Asia, you need to travel like hell to meet people in person to interview candidates, and that is a hot, that is a hot topic as an example, okay? Good. Um, what we will do now is we will step into the work creating the rainbow. So there are sheets on your tables, um, and the ones on the round tables will benefit because they are on the table. So I again invite you to come up and join the crowd here um, in the front. Um, I'll give you 10 minutes to think collectively about one topic um, on the sheets of the table. And that's, the sheets are probably the simplest. Uh, very much like what you see here is you have either a validate or ignite or manage phase. Put yourself into one of these phases. Say, well, I'm in the ignite phase. What risks do I know we, can, we, we, we see here that would, uh, you know, be a risk for renewal, right? Or a risk for churn. Um, so, so, so bring that in here, um, you know, Fill it out, and I will invite three of you to come with me on stage 
and, and give a first impression what we have created here. So uh, 10 minutes for you. Um, good luck. Hey, folks, I know it's exciting. Come back, come back. It was just a starter. Um, I know you're starting to get deeper in there. Remember, um, second day afternoon, uh, you may be more creative tomorrow morning. Uh, nevertheless, I want to invite um, um, three people up to the stage just to give us a little bit of an impression of what you've, what you've started to work on, what you identified. Uh, so maybe uh, we start with the validate phase. Uh, I think Anka from that group could actually show us some examples. Um, come up. You'll get a mic, by the way, from the gentleman here, from that nice guy. And then maybe, um, who had the manage phase? <laughs> Nothing? I, I'd ignite. Ignite? OK. Um, good. Let's start. Hi. Hello, everyone. So I work at Typeform. I suppose you all saw the presentation yes. this morning. We're going <laughs> to uh, continue on that example, kind of. So in the validate stage, we have the same problem that you said, that people don't have a clear image yeah. about what they're trying to measure. So how? we try to help them is by actually showing examples of how other people in the same industry that have been uh, through the same situation measure the same thing. So the power of example. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Anka. <laughs> Thanks for the courage to come up. Give her an applause. Um, so I think for the, um, for the Ignite phase, um, who did we have for the Ignite phase? Okay, do you want to come up? Do you have, have you had to ignite? Oh, you did? Come up. Come up, Donna. Go, go, go. I one mic too many. <laughs> Can I just stay here? <laughs> oh, yeah, I come up. I come down here. <laughs> Thank you. So we've got six risks, or we identified in our group here, um, six risks. Risks. Uh, the first one will be bugs, right? Mm -hmm. So. I'll do like risk and mitigation. Yes. So for the bugs, we say like technical support and um, also what a lot of companies have is a bug library. So give access to the customers or partners who is doing the implementation to the bug library. Yes. So help, um, it's got help to, um, help to self-help. Mm -hmm. um, second is deployment. Um, deployment problems which means customer is not yet ready to roll out and go live with features or licenses or capabilities, whatever they bought. So for that point, uh, we said, well, we need to go back to the implementation phase <laughs> or to the implementation team. And doing that, we need to understand what causes a delay in the implementation and in deployment. Yeah. And it can be interdependence with the other um, teams. When we talk about collaboration, implementation might cause problems in the security, cybersecurity. So to do any changes, in this area of collaboration, we need to go and align with security team. Security team has other preferences, so we need to really understand what causes the real problem, why we're delaying. And that would be probably helpful. The third one is lack of use cases. <laughs> so, sometimes the product can be great, but um, the end user doesn't see any value. So in terms of you know how that's supposed to help me. So and for that, very simple, create a use case. Um, and and probably, you know, probably the right use cases, right, the most impactful ones. There was a good discussion on another table, right, I say use case is good, right, but the customer may, may kind of divert you to some low impact use cases, low risk, no visibility within the customer that you make a great use case, but nobody's interested in that one, right, so very important. Yeah. Well, I think um, that's the validate phase is the most crucial one. That's where you can get an kind of understanding about what might be important or what will be less important and talking to the end users. Um, the first, missing KPIs. So usually we talk about defining KPIs in the validate phase, yes. but misalignment in KPIs can cause problems in the ignite phase. Oh. We, we talk about that, so yeah. Which means during the process of adoption, you really need to um, track and monitor those KPIs who actually, who actually set up in the beginning in the validate phase. Are they still valid? Are they still bringing us to the, to the desired outcomes? Right. Because the problem is at the beginning, we're all very happy and hopeful. We put a lot of KPIs in place. We recommend something to the customer, but there's always risk that they might recommend wrong KPIs. Or they're probably not really wrong, but they're not very valuable to the customer in terms of um, having at the end of the adoption phase a valid justification for the CIO to get more budget for the renewal. Good. So, which means he needs to, like, in the, we, we were talking about that. So, if 
all the users using product doesn't mean that yes. there's a justification enough for the renewal. Good. All right, so Good. if we align that, so we need to realign, readjust, and see is that the right KPI, yes or no. And then five, legacy product loyalty. So, that, so for this problem um, or for this risk, we said, well, end user adoption, right? So you, you have to create the use case story. You have to talk to end users. And that's how you um, highlight the difference between yep. the legacy product and yourself. And the last one's change resistant. People don't want to invest time and learn yes. something new. Same resolution, end user adoption. Beautiful. So you see, we could have actually continued here for, uh, by the way, this was Dana from Cisco. Give her an applause. <laughs> <laughs> Representing that group, of course, right? I, I, got, I got that. So um, I'll save you some time. You know how the, work, how, how the thing is working, right? Look at the different phases where you're going through with your customers, identifying not only the risks uh, or the opportunities for expansion, if you, if you address them correctly, but also the mitigation actions. And if you do that, you know, the recommendation is to measure it as well. We very quickly uh, check to uh, ch uh, change to Slido if there are any, any big questions coming up, and I may handle one in my remaining 15 seconds. How can you help customers define their KPI without being intrusive? What about customers that are self-sufficient and would not share the KPI with you? Excellent question. Uh, it happens all the time. The point is, play your value, one of your values as a customer success manager, from knowing other customers, right? Customers in a similar industry, then that customer that is a little bit protective of how they want to measure your success, um, will actually be very open to listen to you, what you are suggesting, and how you made other customers in other industries successful. Uh, it's not that easy as I'm describing it. It's, a, it's an, a human interaction thing, right? And tell them why it is important to basically make sure that they are successful at their business. And usually the people that you're talking to are the ones that are reporting somewhere else and they want to show that they are doing the right thing for their company as part of the business initiative. I want to thank you. My time is over. Uh, again, I invite you on LinkedIn. I wish you a great afternoon, safe travels back, and uh, welcome to my human network.